afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. In today's video, we'll be focusing on multiple days of severe storm from today, at least through the midweek time frame on Wednesday, including all severe hazards with tornadoes possible. And then a major heat wave does still remain on track for the middle and late portion of the month of June. And then we get into the full tropical weather update later on in the video. Is there any tropical development expected. I'll get into those details later on in today's video. But going back to yesterday, it was a very active severe weather day across the Southern Plains, the Tennessee Valley, and the Southeast. We saw multiple reports of severe weather ranging from 127 wind reports to 129 hail reports. 28 of those hail reports yesterday were two inch in diameter or larger, and most of those did occur across North Texas around the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex uh, from yesterday, and we even had two reported tornadoes, one of them back here into West Central Texas and another one into Northeastern Mississippi for a total of 258 severe weather reports going back to your Sunday, June 11th. Well, we do it all again here this afternoon and this evening. Another enhanced risk for severe storms back into North Central Texas, just south and west of the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex there. We will be watching that with a slight risk extending east southeast bound in toward the Shreveport region, the Jackson, Mississippi area, and then getting toward Mobile, Alabama, Northwest Florida. Those areas will be watching. We have another slight risk up here into the front range and across the east coast from southern New Jersey through Delaware, Maryland, and down into eastern North Carolina as well. And looking at the individual hazards and what these storms could bring to the table through the afternoon and evening today, we could be seeing more significant hail across North Central Texas, as well as up here toward the Pueblo, Colorado region, into southeastern Colorado, northeastern New Mexico, and the western Oklahoma panhandle. These will be the areas we are, have the highest concern for those golf ball, who knows, possibly even tennis ball size hail later on today yet again. Possibly even some significant winds south and west of the Dallas-Fort Worth area. We could be seeing an isolated 75, 80 mile per hour wind gust later today. And the threat for tornadoes is there. We still have that tornado threat in the green shade of color. That's a 2 to 4% shading up to a 9% chance of tornadoes in this brown shaded color between San Angelo and the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. So we we will be watching this later on today. And looking here toward the dinner time frame with the peak daytime heating, these storms will be building up very quickly late this afternoon after 3 o'clock central time, and they will be going through the dinner time frame. This stops at 6 o'clock this evening, and you see a lot of these storms starting to build up across north central Texas, and there are only a couple storms that develop here, and they will take up a lot of the instability, big hail producers, big wind producers, and possibly even a couple of tornadoes. Tornadoes, and then more of a coverage of storms becoming more numerous as you move back northwest into Wyoming and eastern Colorado, western Kansas through the evening hours. And then we'll start to wane with the intensity of the severe weather as we go to the late evening and overnight hours into your Tuesday morning. And then speaking of Tuesday, we have a very potent subtropical jet moving across the southern United States. We got an upper level low up here across the Great Lakes, ushering in all of this Pacific moisture across the southern United States. And that does continue as we go into Wednesday during the middle of the week on June 14th as well. So as expected, we have more severe storms rumbling across the north central Texas region getting into southeastern Oklahoma, southern Arkansas, northern Louisiana, and eastbound through Alabama, Mississippi, and Georgia as we go into Tuesday. And as we go into Wednesday, that shifts just a little bit further off to the east, including the Jackson, Mississippi area, Birmingham, Tuscaloosa, Montgomery, down here just south of Atlanta. Those will be the areas at prime risk for severe storms on Wednesday, including the threat for significant severe weather as well. So 
not only could we see severe weather, but it could also be significant on Wednesday across the Jackson, Mississippi area, just south of Birmingham, Tuscaloosa, into Montgomery, and into southern Georgia. So we will be keeping an eye on this. Probably some big hail producers, wind gusts over 75 miles per hour, and possibly even a couple of tornadoes as well. So looking here, Tuesday morning, our first round of storms early on this week, besides the round today back to the west. We have a couple of storms billowing up during the morning hours on your Tuesday tomorrow, but then we'll have a lull in the action. By midday, we'll be heating up the environment. The moisture will be growing, the instability will be growing, and then by the time we get to late afternoon, similar to today where we see the storms back in Texas and Oklahoma, we'll see more storms start to develop during peak daytime heating, 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and they will push eastward, and they will be moving over the same area. So I am concerned about a flash flooding risk in addition to the severe weather chances as well on Tuesday. Then we'll get a break going into Wednesday, and then we'll do it all over again just a little bit further to the east though as we head into Wednesday evening with a more of an MCS or mesoscale convective system likely across Alabama and Georgia and possibly as far south as North Florida as we go through Wednesday night. And looking at the rainfall totals with several rounds of storms expected from the central plains, the southern plains, and the southeast, you're always going to see a lot of rainfall amounts, especially with multiple rounds of storms. And you see just that up to six, seven inches of rain is a possibility possibility, if not a likelihood, down across central Alabama, getting into west central and southwestern Georgia, so definitely keeping an eye on that, especially if you live right around the Montgomery, Alabama region. That's going to be probably one of the hardest hit areas over the next few days with the rainfall going through the week, and that's where we have the flash flooding threat. So the flash flooding threat to, on Tuesday will be across northeast Texas, across portions of Arkansas, northern Louisiana, and eastbound all the way towards the Atlanta metro area, and then on Wednesday, it's in a similar area, but shifts just a little bit further off to the east, encompassing more of eastern Mississippi, south central Alabama, and to south central Georgia, just south of the Atlanta metro area there on Wednesday during the middle of the week. Unfortunately, though, farther to the north, the news is not as good as we're seeing down to the south. We still are in a drought. We're building the drought even stronger as we go into the Midwest, the Ohio Valley. We do see some hints of some rainfall, some decent rain across Ohio, getting into West Virginia there and Western Pennsylvania. That'll definitely help for those locations and even some decent rains up into the UP of Michigan, Northeast Wisconsin, but elsewhere, we'll be lucky to get over a half an inch of rain through the week and a lot of these values may even be very conservative. I think some of us see no rain through the Saturday time frame, so definitely a very dire situation across the Midwest. As the drought does continue, we have a moderate drought that will continue to billow up across the upper Midwest, the lower Midwest, the Ohio Valley, the New England region, and possibly getting into severe drought category if we don't see the rainfall over the next couple of weeks. So that will be something to keep an eye on moving forward. But if you do like detailed weather breakdowns, including North America, Southern Canada, the United States, and the tropics, be sure to press the subscribe button down below. It's absolutely free to do. And like I said, you get these detailed weather breakdowns each and every day. And it's also very important to press the like button, the thumbs up button down below the video. I can't stress this enough how important that is to help to get all of this weather information out to as many people as possible. So I definitely appreciate that as well. So let's break down the upper level weather pattern through the week here. So with the temperatures on uh, Monday here today, June 12th, we do see that upper level low pressure system spinning across the central Great lakes, a little bit of some ridging up here into the Pacific Northwest and Southwestern Canada and just general troughing down to California, but we start to see signs of a ridge trying to emerge across Mexico and the Rio Grande Valley here into Southern Texas. Now, it will take some time to build up, but by the middle of the week, we start to see that ever so slightly lift further to the north as that trough around the Great Lakes pushes a little bit further to the east. That will open up the jet stream 
stream and also the upper level pattern to a building ridge across the middle of the country as we head further towards that Father's Day weekend time frame. This is on Saturday, June 17th, and that ridge will start to move up toward the north, toward the Red River here into Oklahoma and Texas and parts of the Gulf Coast states as we get into this upcoming weekend. So as such, temperatures will be heating up in a big way. So looking today, these are your high temperatures, 70s and 80s, very comfortable across the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, maybe even getting into the 50s with some areas here, not cracking the 60 degree mark across Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, getting into Western Pennsylvania, parts there of West Virginia. We're just seeing the influence of that upper level trough and the pesky showers and storms there. But where that ridge begins to develop, you can clearly see it across southern Texas, northern Mexico. Triple digit heat will start to build down here into the Rio Grande Valley today. That will continue through the middle of the week. We'll start to heat up in the Midwest a little more, middle 80s on Wednesday. And then we'll see that heat wave really take shape, especially for Texas, as we go into this upcoming weekend on Saturday, June 17th, with widespread 100s there from Lubbock, Texas, eastward to Abilene, to the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, Waco, down here to Houston, widespread 100-degree mark, and that even builds further north on Father's Day itself on Sunday, June 18th, with more 90s moving in toward portions of Nebraska, Kansas, Missouri, uh, Oklahoma here, and then low 100s, possibly cracking the 105 mark across West Texas in those drier locations with the drought ongoing on Father's Day itself. And that heat has some staying power, so it will continue beyond Father's Day and likely take us through the majority of the end of June. This goes through at least Sunday, June 25th, and we see signs of this ridge continuing with an omega blocking pattern taking hold with a trough across the west and a trough lingering across portions of the I-95 corridor into the northeast through that time frame. But the good news is, if there's a silver lining with this, with the ridge building further north, it takes the storm track and shifts it further to the north as well. So we'll have wetter conditions here across the Pacific Northwest, the Northern Plains, and the Northwest flow trying to open up across the Midwest and Ohio Valley. But I do want to note, though, with the ongoing drought across the Midwest and Ohio Valley, it will take time to get moisture up and over that ridge and it, to saturate the atmosphere in those areas. So be patient. The rainfall is coming here, hopefully by the third and fourth week there of June. We just have to be patient across those areas. So looking here at the mid-level jet, this is the 500 millibar bar mid-level jet stream and it does look interesting by the time we get into the third week there in june after father's day june 19th through the 25th time frame we see the stronger low pressure system try to develop across alberta and saskatchewan canada here with a stronger cold front extending down the eastern side of that into the northern rockies and what this will do is try to get that northwest flow pattern going and ahead of that building instability now i will say this is probably Probably a lot more overdone than it's going to be, but I will say the instability will be trending further north as we get into the June 19th through the 25th time frame. So as such, just kind of marking around that Tuesday, June 20th time frame, just to show you what the pattern looks like. We have no rainfall underneath that ridge, but the northwest flow with the active jet stream over the top. We have a couple clusters of showers and storms, an hour here, an hour there of thunderstorms, maybe every one to three days in your location. If you live in the Dakotas, Nebraska, Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, Illinois, Missouri, those areas will probably be more prime for severe weather and some heavy rains at times getting into that third week there in June. So as such, my severe weather forecast from June 19th through the 25th, we have a very likely category now of severe storms into eastern Dakotas through Minnesota, the Minneapolis-St. Paul region and the Twin Cities, down through Wisconsin, northern Illinois, northeast Iowa, those areas including Chicago, Milwaukee, and Green Bay. And then a likely category outside of that, getting into the western and central Ohio Valley, dropping southbound into the Tennessee Valley, parts of the northern Dixie Alley region as well. 
I will note, though, just because you're in a likely or very likely category does not mean every single location within this, these areas will see severe weather. Just the probability of severe weather will be much higher if you're in the likely and especially the very likely category going through that time frame. And beyond, into the end of June and the first couple of days just before the 4th of July, going through July 2nd, that ridge will take off further north. So that means building heat and we'll see that ridge on the northern periphery start to break down at times during that late June, early July time frame, but it will be fighting that ridge further to the north. So this could be a little bit further south than I expect here with the rainfall, but with the building El Nino, the active storm track of late, it's not surprising to see the rainfall anomalies further south here into the central and southern plains and the Dixie Alley region, but it could also be a little bit further north than this model does suggest, so I do want to say that, but for now, we will say likely severe weather, again, from the Missouri Valley region, the central plains, back south and eastbound, and toward the Tennessee Valley and Dixie Alley as we go in towards that June 26th through July 2nd time frame. Now turning to the tropical weather update it is very quiet across the tropical Atlantic, the Caribbean, and the Gulf. We do have some tropical waves underneath this, but they are well far to the south for anything to happen, too close to land for anything to occur here. And looking at the GEFS ensembles, precipitable water values, you have a very strong Bermuda high pressure system anchored across the western tropical Atlantic today. So anything that tries to develop tropical wave-wise will be well far to the south south and really just over northern South America and the Central Americas as well and then the crossing over into the Eastern Pacific Ocean. And that really takes shape all the way through the end of the week. We'll start to see, though, the Bermuda High pushing further to the east. So that will try to open up a little bit more of these systems to try to develop and push up into the Caribbean. But as we get in toward the middle of next week, there is a slight signal. And I emphasize the word slight. There could be enough ingredients come together for something that we may have to watch here in the Caribbean as we go into the middle of next week. Now, it is a far cry away. So we'll have to keep an eye on this, but the water temperatures are warm. So we'll continue to, you know, monitor the situation as it develops. Um, but we'll see if any of these tropical waves that try to develop and can survive across the lesser Antilles and get into the Caribbean or even the Gulf. We will have to monitor this with the warmer water temperatures out there and looking at some of the ensemble pressure centers. So starting with the GEFS ensemble for that next Wednesday time frame. It's always really had that big signal for some of the members showing a stronger system trying to develop somewhere around the Western Caribbean, somewhere around the Gulf, the Western Cuba, uh, Cuba area, and then moving over Florida. I'm just not quite buying that quite yet. It's still far out, as you know, and it's been kind of, you know, moving back and forth. One run, it'll have it toward Mexico. The next run, it'll have it on the East Coast. So I'm not really buying this ensemble quite yet. I'm a little bit more in line with the GEPS and also also the EPS, which is the European Ensemble, it has still more subtle signs of some tropical development, but it's not clear cut of where just it will develop. So we'll continue to watch this toward the middle of next week. And like I said, the EPS is signaling the same thing, possibly a couple tropical waves surviving into the Caribbean. But again, the signal is not strong enough to say whether or not we will have development. So right now, all I can say bottom line is wait and see what will happen um, right now. There's nothing that is a guarantee. I know you're going to see a lot of people out there on YouTube saying, well, there's a hurricane coming. No, there can't be farther from the truth. Um, there, it is a far cry from that right now. All, all we have to see is if that tropical waves can move across the Lesser Antilles and survive first. And if they can survive into the Caribbean, then look at here, the tropical cyclone points of origin. If those tropical waves survive into the Western Caribbean and the Gulf, then we could have some more development with the warmer waters. But again, I want to emphasize it is a far cry from a hurricane, a tropical storm, or even a depression at this point. So we will continue to watch this as we move into next week. And looking here at the National Hurricane Center's forecast, again, I do agree with this. No tropical cyclones expected over the next seven days. Too much shear, and it's too far south for anything to develop, so I'm not concerned there. And the Eastern Pacific, we are A-OK -okay as well. The next seven days, I don't expect anything to occur there as well. Well, if you want to follow me on Twitter for additional weather forecast updates, be sure to hit the description down below. 
And follow me on Twitter at HWeather420. I do post on there fairly frequently throughout the week as well, so I appreciate that. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching my video and supporting this channel each and every day. All the new subscribers out there, all the old subscribers, I really do appreciate it. Be sure to press the like button, the thumbs up button down below the video. If you like today's video, leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. I'll get to those later on today. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're new and hit the notification bell to get all of my daily weather forecast updates on this channel. Have a great Monday, everybody. A great rest of your week, and I will see you all in the next video.